Hi everyone, I am Shomad Chakraborty, a third year graduate student at Vanderbilt University. Today, I am going to discuss about the paper called Distance Estimation with Social Distancing, a Mobile Augmented Reality Study. In today's era, we can develop augmented reality applications on various AR head-mounted displays, such as the Microsoft HoloLens or the Z Mini, as well as on our regular mobile device, devices, such as iPhones, iPads, or various Android devices because of their adequate hardware capability to run AR apps. However, if you go through the AR literature in general, you will find that most of the studies have been conducted using AR HMDs. In our study, we mainly focused on the mobile AR displays and we ran a distance estimation study using these devices. Here comes the first question, and that is. What are the motivations of our study? Some of the previous distance estimation researches conducted in mobile AR using life-sized human avatars show that people estimate the egocentric distances of the human avatars accurately using mobile AR displays. Also, it has been found that an added avatar motion such as walking side by side has not improved the accuracy of the estimated distances of the avatars using these devices. Now, if you look on the results of both studies, you can find that 10 meters was used as the minimum testing distance for both of them. So what have we done? We have added a coughing animation to a life-size static human avatar and have tried to see whether it has any influence on distant estimation or not. Also, the distances that we have tested are relatively nearer to the participants, such as 4 feet, 8 feet, and 12 feet. Now, to make it more relatable with the current pandemic situation, we have added masks to the avatars, which gave us four different avatar conditions, such as unmasked static avatar, unmasked coughing avatar, masked static avatar, and finally, masked coughing avatar. Now, a question naturally rise up, which is, why have we chosen a coughing animation and mask in our experiment? This is because first, we wanted to see whether an evocative motion cue, such as the coughing animation has any effect on distance estimation or not, rather than a simple walking animation. And second, some of the previous researches show that people perceive threatening objects as closer than non-threatening objects. In our experiment, the coughing animation would be the threatening situation rather than the static animation of the avatar, where the mask may or may not reduce the effect of the scariness of the participants. This is the reason why we chose the coughing animation along with mask conditions in our experiment. So what are the hypotheses of our study? First, Given recent work on distance estimation in mobile AR devices, participants will be able to accurately perceive the distance to virtual avatars displayed in action space. Second, a coughing unmasked avatar will cause an emotional reaction in subjects that will cause them to perceive the avatar as closer to them than it actually is, given that they will want to ensure a safe distance away from an unhealthy avatar. To check that, we built a mobile phone app for conducting the experiment. Because of the pandemic, we were unable to run this study in our lab, and that's why we distributed the app via the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store so that people could easily install and run the app in their devices wherever they want. At the end of the experiment, the app automatically sent the data back to us via email. There were 24 trials in total uh, in, ex in the experiment. Every trial started with either a masked or unmasked avatar randomly chosen by the app, and then either a static animation or a coughing animation was added to the avatar randomly by the app. Then a random distance among the three distances was chosen by the app and the already chosen animated avatar was placed at that distance from the device. Next, the participant was asked to enter the egocentric distance of the avatar using the graphical user interface of the app. 
and then the app asks the participant to rate his or her comfortability level around the chosen avatar at that particular distance using a five point Likert scale, where one means very uncomfortable and five means very comfortable. These steps would be go on for 12 trials. After 12 trials, participants were asked to walk eight to 10 steps forward, turn back and redo the experiment for up to another 12 trials. We did this to reduce participants' abilities to use environmental elements as references for the distance estimation across all trials. At the end of the experiment, participants were asked to rate their overall comfortability level around each of other condition based on the same five-point life scale mentioned before. We recruited 38 participants from USA, Europe, and Asia to run this experiment, among whom six participants' data were discarded because of faulty data. So among the left 32 participants, there were 14 females and 18 males of age range 19 to 69 years. We ran a two by two by three repeated measures ANOVA on the mean distance estimations, and we found that the estimates were quite accurate with respect to the real distances without having any effect of the coughing animation or the mask and unmask conditions. We ran a four by three by two repeated measures ANOVA on the ratings of comfortability of how comfortable people felt around each avatar condition in each trial by making the mass static avatar as the control as we thought that this avatar condition will seemingly be the most comfortable choice by the people among the other three avatar conditions. And we found that the unmasked coughing avatar got lower ratings compared to the masked static avatar. There was no difference between the other two conditions, that is the unmasked static avatar and the masked coughing avatar compared to the masked static avatar, which suggests that people felt comfortable around the mass static avatar in general. And finally, the level of comfortability increased with increment of distance for all our animation conditions. So what have we found from the results of the experiment? First, people perceive the egocentric distances of the avatars accurately in mobile AR devices, which supports our hypothesis one, which also says so. Second, we have not found any effect of avatar animation and mask on estimated distances, which is contrary to our second hypothesis, which states that people will perceive the unmasked coughing avatar to be closer to them than it actually is. However, we also have found that the unmasked coughing avatar got lower comfortability ratings than the masked static avatar, and the comfortability ratings increase with the distance increment of any avatar condition, which partially supports the second hypothesis, that is the coughing animation and the mask conditions of the avatars did cause an emotional reaction in the subjects about their unhealthy or healthiness. So what could be the possible reasons behind our findings? First, there could be perceptual distortions that result from a viewpoint in the real world that is offset from the viewpoint of the device. This conflict in the center of projection would predict distortions which would expand the perceived environment, which might be the result of the accuracy in the estimated distances. And lastly, people might not encode the status of the virtual avatars, but rather just focused on their feet and estimated ground distances to them, because of which there was no effect of animation or mask on the estimated distances possibly. Finally, what can we take away from this study? First, it is possible to run controlled AR action studies in the wild using mobile AR devices if a user-friendly guidance to run the app and a reliable data collection method have been formed. Finally, the results of our study replicate the results of the previous distance estimation studies conducted in mobile AR, which were controlled studies. However, our study was run in uncontrolled distributed environments. I would like to thank our sponsors and my co-authors for, the, for their co continuous support throughout this study. I would like to thank you for listening to my talk 
and I am happy to take questions now. Lastly, if you want to try the app in your phone, you can scan this QR code to install them in your device. Thank you and enjoy running the experiment.